I'll bet you never thought that the two major elements that comprise Ant Farms would be part of the biggest movie news of this time. Well, they are. Uh, Paul Rudd is set to star as the main character in Ant-Man, though we do not know which Ant-Man he should be or will be. And we also have news that Joseph Gordon-Levitt is going to be working on Sandman, though we do not know if he will star or mainly work behind the scenes as in a pro producing role or di directing role. Ants and sand, I get it. Yeah, I get it, because it's in the box and you look at them. Now, I think we have some test footage of Paul Rudd as Ant-Man, which is really pretty cool. Uh, if you watch Conan, that was really funny. If you don't, I'm sorry, it didn't make any sense. At I all. think it was still, uh, it still has some cinematic value if you don't watch Conan. <laughs> that is, of course, from Mac and Me, uh, a terrible 1980s movie. And every time Paul Rudd shows up on Conan O'Brien's show, whatever it may be, he shows that footage tricking him. I think he's done it 10 to much, 12 times. Much to Conan's chagrin. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's. Uh, Edgar Wright is super happy that they got Paul Rudd locked in for Ant-Man. That was his first choice, mm -hmm. and now it's full steam ahead. They have their script, they have their star, so we should see that next Well, Paul next Rudd, year, I, think. I think he works. He's, he's kind of a funny and affable guy. I think he can definitely play the leading man. I think he has some depth to him, but he can also bring that levity to it. Not all superhero movies need to be dark, certainly not Ant-Man. It leads me to believe they're going to go with the like absent-minded professor Ant-Man. I think he's going to be and Hank not Pym. the wife beating. Yeah. Oh, Hank Pym was. Oh, in the Ultimates universe, um, <laughs> Hank Pym beats the shit out of the Wasp. I don't and think it's, it's a little dark. So I don't think Paul Rudd's going to be that. not going to be that version. Yeah. I, I, well, judging that it's Edgar Wright, it's going to be it's going to be on a light more lighter mood. There will be moments where it is not light, but it, for the most part, it's going to be a, a funny version. So now into the darker, more foreboding news. See, you had mentioned earlier that you think the Sandman should never be made into a movie. Well, I mean, here's the thing. It's happening. It's happening. happening. It's happening. <laughs> it has gotten its green light, uh, according to Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Mm -hmm. He has signed on as a producer uh, with David S. Goyer as writer, obviously adapting Neil Gaiman's uh, graphic novels, The Sandman. Now, yes. He, no, we don't know if he's going to star yet. Those are still apparently in the works. I think he wants to. I think there's a direct. good chance it will happen. Um, can y You're familiar with the Sandman comics. Can he effectively portray Morpheus? I mean, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt has surprised me in, with his range in the past. I mean, if you look at all his disparate roles, he, he can run the gamut. I've never seen him play an ancient and timeless being before, uh, but that doesn't mean he can't. Mm -hmm. um, I am sticking with my guns and saying The Sandman will not do well as a movie. It is made a graphic novel to be a graphic novel now and forevermore. Do you think it will suffer the same fate as The Watchmen, one of the best graphic novels undisputedly of all time? I liked the movie, but it was not really accepted very well among uh, comic readers in Hollywood itself. I think The Watchmen had a better chance to work because it is one book, mm -hmm. and that you can take that one book and turn it into one movie, notwithstanding the sequel that they want to do. But The Sandman is 10 volumes of a graphic novel, and they're optioning just the first. Now, the first is a complete story, and it's a great story, but when you look at all of those books together and how their plots interweave and the character development across the whole thing, it's an amazing story, and movie audiences will get that amazing story. See, we even lost a lot of the finer points and subtleties in The Watchmen, and it being one book, one great book, one long book, but still one book. Do you feel that Neil Gaiman's, his ad added touches will be lost? Will people not unfamiliar with the series just never be able to understand this? It depends on the director, I think. It depends on the direction that they take it. Even if Goyer writes an amazing script, which he has done in the past, he's also written some really shitty movies, and if Joseph Gordon-Levitt kills the role, it's all going to depend on the tone of the movie, how much they embrace, like, you know, the Victorian era that it starts in, and like, m you know, man out of place both in the mortal world and in a new modern world he's not familiar with. 
you know, how readily an audience is able to just, you know, absorb this lore that they've never had any experience with before. That's what I'm a little worried about. Yeah. Because with the Harry Potter movies, I feel like it would not have made sense to someone who did not read the book. Luckily, the books are pretty easy to read and many people have read them. Uh, you can identify with wizards and witches and dragons, Sandman, and dwarves and elves and yeah, it's a it's a different story because it's so critically acclaimed, it's so beloved by people who read it, but it has this whole separate world that I don't have inherent references to, or people don't have inherent references to in their minds already. Right. People don't know who Morpheus is besides right. the Matrix guy, which is wrong on you've, all counts. You've got a whole new pantheon of. Gods is the wrong term. They call themselves the endless or the eternals. You've got dream, destiny, death. People may understand desire that and part. Delirium. And like that, that they those understand are those characters words. To, yeah, right. At a, at a base level. Now, here, I'm, I'm just going to read you the plot summary for this first. Uh, eight issues. Okay, I'll try Sandman. to imagine it yes. as a cinematic world. So Dream is imprisoned for decades by an occultist seeking immortality. Upon escaping, he must reclaim his objects of power while still in a weakened state, confronting an addict to his dream powder, the legions of hell, and an all-powerful madman in the process. Guest starring several DC comic characters, John Constantine, Scott Free, John Jones, Scarecrow, Etrigan the Demon, and the original Sandman, it also features an introduction of Lucifer and a cameo from Batman. You know, before you said it, before you said the word uh, Constantine, I was thinking this is a, a verging in a dangerous territory. Constantine starring Keanu Reeves. It didn't capture the darkness and the 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 tone of Constant John Constantine's uh, right. character or his it, books. It diluted the brand to make it more accessible to a wider audience, so that alienated fans of of that. Comic I hadn't read it, anything about it, it before I watched the, the movie, and I was like, "This movie is is weird. Yeah. I don't get, I don't know if I I can latch on to this." I, I think, and and what what I do like is. You know, when you look at the adaptation of Sin City, that was extremely true to the comic. Mm -hmm. And Joseph Gordon-Levitt is going to be in the next installment of Sin City, uh, which I think is coming out next year, A Dame to Kill For. Um, so we'll see if whoever ends up directing and executive producing Sandman has that same, you know, I don't care about the general audience, I care about staying true to this comic and the writers of this comic and the creators and the fans of this comic. That's what I'm a little worried about. because. I know Sandman is very, very, very different from most superhero movies like Man of Steel or the Dark Knight trilogy, but it seems like, uh, at least on some level, that superhero movies are a little bit embarrassed of their source material and kind of, kind of like try to toughen it up. At the end of the day, it's a money game. You yeah. have to make something that's going to make money. Well, and I'm I saying I don't think that a true adaptation of Sandman will make money in, uh, to a greater general audience. So, do you think it's going to be diluted and warped? I do. Hmm. And. And I don't fault these people for wanting to take something that they love and make it into a format that they love. Mm -hmm. It's just that when, if the movie is bad, I'll always have the comics. That won't ruin the comics for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm probably going to take a hands-off approach to this project. That's a little bit how I feel about a lot of uh, adaptations of superheroes. I mean, many people had problems with Man of Steel, but. I kind of, I, I actually, I did enjoy it. There were, of course the characters were wildly off, the stories were wildly off from what we're used to, but I kind of view it as an alternate universe kind of thing, more than I view it as like a, a canon storyline. Well, that's right DC's wheelhouse. Yeah, oh, they, they, they love it. There's a lot of Earths. Uh, <laughs> but that, that's kind of how I take it. I don't know if the general public is going to be mad or not, which brings me to my question. Will you be mad if they screw up the Sandman, or, or maybe not screw up, but adapt it in a way that is not true to what you've read, if you've read it. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think of not only that, but the plight of superhero movies being taken from their source material to begin with.